Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to do a project about I've recently started a um, sort of series of challenges. It's all linked together with achievement badges. So once you've done so many challenges, you can self award yourself a, a badge. And one of these badges was the code breaking badge. I wanted to do this, but one of the challenges inside of it was learn Morse code. And it got me thinking about if Morse code's really used anymore. So let me know in the Element 14 community if you still use Morse code regularly. In today's episode, I'm going to be making a machine that you can type on and it will spit out Morse code. Let's get started. I started thinking about what I was going to use for this project. The first thing I had to think about was a microcontroller. So I wanted a USB keyboard that I could type onto. So I needed to have a microcontroller that could take that USB keyboard and read what I'm typing. Um, so then I can make my dots and dashes based on the type. I've picked the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This can take my keyboard input and it will be able to output it in a series of audible dots and dashes. But the other reason I've picked this is it's got the W feature. So I can connect it to the internet and I'll be able to send my Morse code anywhere in the world. So let me know if you would uh, like me to send you a message um, and then you can try reading it. My next thing I needed was a keyboard. I was going to just get a standard USB keyboard and put all my electronics in a box. But then I remembered before the Raspberry Pi 400 came out, People were modifying the Raspberry Pi official keyboard to fit a Raspberry Pi inside and there was a surprisingly large amount of room inside. I'll put a link below to one of the blog posts that did this. I've ordered an official Raspberry Pi keyboard and I'm going to try to fit my Pico and my all my electronics inside this section at the back which is at least 50% space. I'm going to use a few other components like uh, buzzers uh, and LEDs and that's going to be my project so let's get started. The first step of this project is to get the program for running on the Pico right so I can test it all out before I start building it inside the keyboard. So let's take a look at code. So this code is in C. I've taken from the examples, it's the tiny USB host example. And then I've just added my own code to it um, to do the Morse code stuff. I've got it taking, once it's got the key press from what was already here, I'm looking up the Morse code associated to that letter or number. And then in a non-blocking way, so it can still receive new key presses. I've got taking the dots and the dashes and doing the right timing. So I've got this time base so I can edit that and play with it um, until I get what feels like the right speed for my Morse code. But a dot is one, a dash is three times that length. There's spaces in between the dot and dashes of one. At the end of a letter, I'm using this for I've got three of the time base gap and if it's then a space it's got another three because added on to the one after a letter that will make seven and that's what the Morse code implementation states it should be. So in here I've got my sounder sounding and the LED lighting up so that's a quick run through of the code. Now let's have a look at that running. So just to test it, I've just put it on this Pico here. I've got a, a USB adapter so I can plug a keyboard in. And because I'm using that USB port, 
I've set up another Pico. I'm using Cutecom to read the debug messages from this Pico through this Pico Pro Pico. I've got the sounder here and I've got my LED on here and my reset switch just broken out for now. So I've got my Raspberry Pi keyboard. I plug this in and it comes up with a device with address 5 is mounted but then it comes up with this panic message and it won't pick up any key presses. So this is part of the actual example code. I had a look through and I couldn't find why it was doing this. So I then got an old alternative USB keyboard out. And now when I plug it in, if I reset the Pico, I can see that it's got address one. It can pick up that it's a keyboard. And when I press a button, it does the Morse code associated with that. So. so I get my Morse code output, I get my LED flashing on and off. It's picked up the key presses that was happening whilst it was already doing the Morse code. So it's carried on. So that's all working with this keyboard. But ideally, I'd like to use this one. It's got the space that I can mount my electronics inside and it's a really neat keyboard. Let's have a look and see if we can figure out why it was doing that. This keyboard hasn't got any obvious screw points. It is being held together by clips all around the outside. So I can prise that open. Then I've got this panel here that must be hiding. Disconnect that copper and take the keyboard off. I can safely put this piece away. This is also being held by little clips. This is the PCB inside the keyboard. So now my suspicions is that it's struggling to read the keyboard because the D plus and minus are coming from this chip, which is processing these three USBs and the keyboard. So it looks like there's a D plus and D minus coming from each USB port and the keyboard. There's one coming from that unpopulated chip and that, but then they merge at this point with that lower one being on the other side of the board. So I suspect that's just two different parts that could be used doing the same thing. I think I'm going to try, there's some resistors here, I'm going to try taking them off and then that will disconnect the D plus and minus from this chip here from the hub and then see if I can connect into the back of this USB connector because I didn't want to use this adapter inside anyway. I wanted to hard to wire it on. So I'm going to try hooking into the D plus and minus from those lines and put it straight into the PK. So time to have a go at that and see if I can get this keyboard working with it. I've been able to see that this chip here is the GL852G which is a USB hub controller. Based on the pinout, it is like I was expecting. The line of R1 is going to data minus and R2 is going to data positive. I'm going to take those resistors off because that will disconnect it from that hub. And then by soldering in the Pico on the keyboard side of where those resistors should have been. I'll have just the connection to the keyboard and I won't get any interference from the hub side of it. So here goes. Now I've got my sort of USB straight off the board. So I've got data minus and positive and plus five volts and ground from the USB port. So I'm going to connect this up to the Pico and check it's working. Now I've hooked on the data and I've got plus five volts and ground to go to the Pico. I've plugged in the keyboard that wasn't working. And now if I power it through the USB there, that's only now supplying power and I press, I get the Morse code. 
now I've got that working and tested it all in theory, I'm going to solder it up uh, ready to mount into this space. To reduce size, I'm not going to use this one with the headers on, so I'm going to re-solder this up on this Pico that can slot in there, uh, and then we can check it's all working. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! So I'm ready to build it all up now. I've got my uh, PCB from the keyboard that came with it. So I've got that modification to remove the USB hub. So these two wires here is data plus and data minus from the keyboard only. I've got a test point for ground linked in and I've got five volts. The easiest place to hook this into was the um, USB uh, hub controller chip because um, it was just a really easy pad to hook that into. I've got this extra wire so I had a look at playing with the code uh, because I was trying to figure out where to put my LED to flash and I was thinking about making a hole in the top panel or whether I could stick it up out of the back but then I realized I could save myself parts. I've got the num lock, the caps lock and the scroll lock, status LEDs which I'm not using so I thought I could get them to flash the Morse code in light form. Now I had a look at the code, um, I found some bits for trying to set those but I couldn't get it to work and then I just realised I didn't need them for the rest of the project and the quickest thing would just be to control them using a GPIO line from the Pico. So I've hooked that into the unused keyboard controller chip I just had to move the resistor positions across to the blank ones that were next to it to hook in the LEDs to that line uh, and then I've just put this yellow wire on uh, that I'm just going to connect to the GPIO. Now I've changed the code because it needs to be there high so it needs to be pulled low to make the LED turn on so that's fine I've done those modifications so that saves those parts. But now I'm ready to build it in, so I can reinstall my part there. But I need to make room for this Pico. So I'm just going to use my um, Dremel rotary tool and just take out a bit of this material and then I should just be able to fit it in there. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now we've got the buzzer in, the Pico, I've got all the keyboard and all reconnected and I can just pop the top on and push down all our little clips. So now it's all ready to be powered on and we can check if it's working. And here it is, all finished. So I've got it all tucked away inside the keyboard case. So it's looking really sleek and small. I've drilled three little holes there just to let the sound out. Um, just helped the volume of it. It was sounding quite quiet before. Um, and yeah, all I've got to do is take a micro USB cable on USB power and I can plug it in. And then as I type, I get the Morse code flashing and the beep. So let's take a closer look. So I'm really pleased with how this has gone. 
I think it's looking really good, as good as I was hoping for. I wasn't sure if I'd get it all inside the keyboard, but I'm really pleased I have with just the addition of those three little holes. I had ordered a um, sort of five volt regulator and a DC barrel um, socket to power it all from, but I'm glad I persisted and found a way of using the keyboard controller already and taking my power from that and diverting the USB data plus and data minus to the Pico. It's saved a lot of components. I've got all those components ready for my next project. It took a bit longer figuring out those lines and working out how to hitch in to the status LEDs for caps lock, nums lock and scroll lock, but I'm pleased I managed it. The only disappointment was with doing all that, I didn't have time to figure out all the Wi-Fi stuff and get the wireless side of the PKW working. So it's not yet transmitting the Morse code to the internet, but the hardware's all there, so it's something to work on in the future. Let me know what you think. Um, I think it's quite a cool little, I can now just type Morse code. I think it's awesome. I'm in two minds. I might stick it on my shelf and have it as something cool to play with, but I recently was um, chatting to a friend and they mentioned about local telegraph museum and maybe they'd like it. So I'm not sure. Maybe I'll see if they fancy having it as something for people to come and play on. Uh, let me know what you think of that idea. Do you think I should give it away or keep it? But for now, that's all. So I'll see you next time. Bye.